If you've been a lifer more than one day, chances are you've seen these kind of videos. We're gonna make the same kind of cloth simulation today, and this is the result. Delete the default cube, then press Shift plus A and add a UV sphere like this. Press F3 and search for Shade Smooth. Add a plane by pressing Shift plus A like before. Press G, then Z to move the plane on the Z axis. Then press S to scale the plane. Make the plane two and a half times bigger than the sphere. Let's add subdivisions to make sure the plane bends correctly when falling down. Go to the Modifiers tab and add a Subdivision Surface Modifier, then set it to Simple. The Subdivision Surface Modifier divides each face into four smaller faces. That's what you can see right now. Just set it to 1 for now. Let's add the Cloth Physics. Make sure the plane is selected, then go to the Physics tab and add the Cloth Modifier. Select the sphere, go to the Physics tab and add the Collision Modifier. This makes the cloth collide with the sphere. If you want a higher resolution, select the plane and go to the Modifiers tab, then increase the subdivisions. Press play again and see what happens. If you're not very lucky, the plane will end up going through itself. This looks very weird, so we might need to fix it. Go to the Physics tab and enable self-collisions like this. As you can see, the issue is fixed now. Press F3 and search for Shade Smooth while the cloth is selected. Try adding another subdivision surface modifier. When you add it now, it just makes the cloth smoother because of the modifier layering system. If you look to your right, the first modifier takes effect first, then the cloth is simulated, and then it's subdivided again after the simulation. Press Ctrl plus Alt plus Zero to set your camera wherever you're looking right now. Go into the Camera tab, then set the focal length until you're happy with the way it looks. Then just go into the Output tab and change the resolution like this. I want mine to be vertical. Change it to Rendered View by pressing the top right sphere icon, then go to the tab above the Output tab and set the Render Engine to Cycles. Find the light in your scene and delete it. Press Shift A and add an area light. Press G to move it and R to rotate it. Increase the power of the light source. And also the size to make the shadows less harsh. Press Shift D to duplicate it, then press R to rotate it. Press Shift D to duplicate it again and add a light source behind the object. This gives it a nice rim light. Usually it's pretty good to have a strong rim light, so I'll increase the brightness. Once that's done, press Shift plus A and add a plane for the background. Rotate it until it aligns with your camera. Press Shift plus S to scale it so it fits the whole camera frame. Great, let's add some materials. Click and drag the top right corner towards the middle to get two windows. Press the drop-down on the left side of the new window and go into the Shader Editor. Once you're there, press Shift plus A and add a checker texture. Set the scale of the texture to something that looks good to you. If you hover your cursor over a color and press Ctrl plus C, you can copy the color. Press Ctrl plus V on another color to paste it. If you're feeling extra fancy, you can add a spotlight behind your object. I promise this will look good. Make sure it points at the wall and not at the object itself. Increase the power to the point where you think it looks visible enough.
increase the radius to get a softer edge. Try adjusting the color as well, just to see if it looks good. When you're happy with that, select the cloth and add a material to it. I'm gonna make mine metallic. You might have started to notice the lack of reflections in the material. 99% of what makes metal interesting is the environment it's in, so we're gonna have to add an HDRI to the scene. Follow these steps. It's very important that your image has this file extension. This is an HDR which stands for High Dynamic Range. This means it has deeper shadows and lighter bright spots, which is the best for lighting our scene. You can get those images at Polyhaven. I've just decreased the brightness of the HDRI. I'm gonna make my cloth red since it really pops on this background. When I replayed this animation, I realized I had put the rim light far too close to the object. Remember to double check everything is as it should be so this doesn't happen to you. As you can see now, it doesn't have any weird artifacts from the light intersecting with the mesh. Press Ctrl S to save your Blender scene. I think what I wanted to show here was that if you somehow mess up the simulation, instead of letting it go by itself, you will get weird results as it tries to fill in the missing frames. To prevent this, you can bake the animation and make sure it can't be changed. I'm gonna show you how that's done in one moment. By the way, to reset the simulation if it messes up, just change any parameter and it will reset. Click on this button right here to bake your simulation. This makes sure you can freely scroll through the timeline without the simulation messing up. And that's it! Thanks for watching! Go make your own videos with this tutorial and tell me what you would like to see next time.